Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. So, I think it's time for something a little different. I would say more light-hearted, though this is probably the wrong term. If you were born in the early to mid-90s, like myself, you grew up in the infancy of online culture. The first decade of the 2000s saw giant leaps in online technology. I still remember, in the early 2000s, that all too familiar dial-up internet connection sound. As the years passed, towards the later years of the decade, online broadband, social media sites and smartphones started to become the norm. Sites such as MySpace, followed by Facebook and YouTube, defined the changes in online culture. One particular phenomenon for the time were shock sites. Websites such as Ogrish, Rotten.com and LiveLeak hosted, let's say, somewhat controversial content. From tragic accidents, to war crimes, to the downright depraved. Growing up in the 2000s, myself and my friend circle were the ultimate S-tier edgelords, constantly trying to one-up each other with the most outrageous jokes, insults, and attempts to shock each other. On some occasions, during lunch times, we would dare and peer pressure each other into watching certain shock videos, such as Two Girls One Cup, One Man One Jar, and the likes, analysing each other's reactions and clowning the person who reacted badly. While we were a weird bunch, there's no doubt about that, this was just a part of growing up online in the 2000s. During this time period, these types of videos and shock sites were extremely popular online, so much so that certain videos, such as Two Girls One Cup, would be referenced in pop culture on shows such as Family Guy. It was a wild time to grow up. But nevertheless, enough of my reminiscing. Let's get into the topic at hand. Five of the worst shock videos that you should never Google. Number one. One Guy One Screwdriver. Alexei Tatarov is a name that some of you will be all too familiar with. Alexei has filmed himself enduring severe injury, creating two of the most infamous shock videos of the 2000s. He is most well known for One Man One Jar, a video in which depicts Alexei sitting on a glass jam jar until it penetrates his rectum, until it eventually breaks. After the glass shatters, gooey thick blood drips to the ground, creating a puddle. He pulls shards of broken glass out of his anus, all while barely making a sound. As it said, his family was in the house at the time of the incident. Without a doubt, it is one of the sickest shock videos online. I have covered this case on the channel previously. Please feel free to check out the in-depth video on the case in the link below if you want to find out more about Alexei. Although One Man One Jar is what Alexei is primarily known for, he also created many other extreme videos along a similar vein. The other notable video being One Guy One Screwdriver. It said that the video was originally uploaded to a website called efucked.com, where Alexei was a regular poster. It's believed that the video was uploaded after One Guy One Jar. The video itself is just over a minute long and starts in a similar fashion to One Man One Jar, and a strange, eerie song has been dubbed over the video. Alexei can be seen completely naked as he lowers himself down into a squat-type position so that he sits on a glass jar so that it is penetrating him. Though, this time, the glass jar does not break. However, while watching the video, you notice that Alexei has stuck a screwdriver up his urethra, handle side first. As I narrate this, I'm crossing my legs at the thought. 
As the video continues, it jump cuts to a new scene, and it shows Alexei pulling the screwdriver out of his piece, and the blood drips as he slowly pulls the screwdriver out of his urethra. After slowly pulling for a few seconds, the screwdriver pops out as it is followed by a steady stream of gushing blood. He poses for the camera for a few seconds, holding his penis, and he is bleeding so much that it looks like he is urinating pure blood. The video jump cuts once again, and is now shot in a POV style. The camera focuses on the screwdriver laying next to a pool of blood on the ground. Again, the video jump cuts, and it shows Alexei entering the bathroom. Once again, it is shot in a POV style. The camera then focuses on the bathtub and the basin, which are covered in blood. This is where the video ends. Although One Man One Jar is far more well known, as far as I'm concerned, One Man One Screwdriver is far worse. This one made me feel extremely nauseous. Number 2. One Guy Two Spoons Very little context surrounds this video. No information is available suggesting who the man in the video is, or what happened after this video. The origin of the video is partially unknown, but is believed to have first appeared in early 2009. Some speculate that ShockSightList.com, a now defunct shock site, was one of the first places that it could be seen. The video went viral in 2009 and 2010, with several YouTube users filming themselves reacting to the clip. Later, in around 2015 and 2016, the video gained attention again because of the BestShockers.com page about the video, generating another wave of reactions on YouTube. After being mostly forgotten and relegated to the deep dark archives of the internet, One Guy Two Spoons became relevant again in 2021 by spreading on TikTok, as it was featured in videos of things that you shouldn't search up, and subsequently went viral again. It's a short one, at only 45 seconds long, though not for the faint of heart. As the clip plays, a heavy metal song can be heard, which is dubbed over the video. In the 45 second video, a man is shown putting a spoon towards the top of his eye, trying to get it out of the socket. As he plunges the spoon under his top eyelid, the eye begins to protrude from the socket. He then takes a second spoon and pushes it under his bottom eyelid. He then clenches the two spoons together, almost utilizing them as tongs, and he pulls his eye. His eyeball then protrudes from the socket even further. The video ends with his eye almost coming out of his skull. The authenticity of the video has been doubted over the years, with some claiming it as fake. However, upon close viewing, his pupil can be seen focusing in and out. To me, I would hazard a guess and say that this disgusting video is real. Number 3. Two Girls One Cup Let's not beat around the bush here. I'm sure you know of this video. Two Girls One Cup is arguably the most infamous shock video in online history. With countless reaction videos on YouTube, online threads about the incident, and pop culture references. Ultimately, Two Girls One Cup is part of the disturbing content starter pack. The most well known version of the video is around one minute long, though, in reality, the infamous shock video is actually a trailer for an hour long scat pornographic film. In fact, Two Girls One Cup is not even the actual name of the movie. The real name 
is Hungry Bitches to Extreme to Print, which was released on the 5th of January 2007. The film was produced by a Brazilian based company by the name of MFX Media and directed by Marco Antonio Fiorito. Marco Antonio Fiorito, born on the 1st of July 1971 in Sao Paulo, describes himself as a compulsive fetishist. Marco started having interest in producing films in 1994 with his wife, Joel Mabrito, using her artistic name as Leticia Miller. Marco then began a fetish film business and soon moved on to developing an interest in coprophagia. Coprophagia being the act of consumption of feces and Marco made many movies depicting such acts. Authorities in the United States branded some of Fiorito's films as obscene and filed charges against Danilo Croce, a Brazilian lawyer living in Florida, listed as an officer of a company distributing Fiorito's films in the United States. Fiorito explained that had he known that selling his films in the US was illegal, he would have stopped. In his declaration, he stated, I would have stopped because the money is not the main reason that I make these films. He then added, I have already made fetish movies with scattered feces using chocolate instead of real feces. Many actors make scat films, but they don't agree to eat the actual feces. In fact, he claimed that the infamous Two Girls One Cup trailer was filmed by using chocolate ice cream and not actual feces. Danilo Croce was sentenced to three years of unsupervised probation and also ordered to forfeit $98,000. The popularity and infamy of Two Girls One Cup was largely aided by the early social media era, largely YouTube. If you was around in 2007 and 2008, YouTube was filled with reaction videos, some of which you can still find to this day. In fact, even Joe Rogan filmed his reaction to the disgusting video. The two girls in the video are only credited as Carla and Latifah. Some details are known on what happened to the women after the video. In regards to Carla, believe it or not, her last known job was working as an ice cream vendor in Rio de Janeiro. Following the viral success of Two Girls One Cup, Carla could barely go outside her front door without being recognised, something that according to Carla, she was not ready for. However, she soon grew into her newfound fame and started to enjoy the attention, even signing autographs in the street, and according to her, on one occasion, an adoring fan asked her to drop her pants and defecate into his hands, which she did. According to her, the fan then ate the feces. After the success of Two Girls One Cup, Carla starred in other extreme adult entertainment videos, though the work, according to her, soon dried up. She would later quit the industry to live a more normal life. In regards to her co-star, Latifah, it is said that she died only three days after filming, the cause of death being dysentery, which is an infection of the intestines that causes diarrhea containing blood or mucus. It is unclear to whether this was caused by her participation in the sick movie. I would hazard a guess and say that it was. But nevertheless, what happens in the actual video? As mentioned, the version of the video that we all know is one minute long. As the clip starts, you hear a piano track dubbed over the video. It starts off, dare I say, pretty good, with two women making out. However, 
things take a turn for the worse real quick. At around 10 seconds in, one of the women, who I believe is Latifa, defecates into a glass, completely filling it. A jump cut then occurs, showing the two women licking the feces in the glass, acting as if it's almost an ice cream. The video jump cuts once again, this time showing Carla swilling feces around her mouth as it is also covered on her face. She swallows and then opens her mouth to prove that she has consumed it. Once again, another jump cut, and the clip shows both women making out as they have feces in their mouths, and they swap it as they kiss. The next scene shows Carla stick her fingers down her throat, prompting her to vomit into the glass as Latifah licks it. Following this, the next scene shows Latifah standing up, with Carla on her knees, looking up at her. Latifah then vomits directly onto Carla's face. The scene is then repeated, with Carla vomiting into Latifah's mouth. The last scene shows both women covered in poo, with feces overflowing from Latifah's mouth, as Carla begins to eat it. This is where the video ends. It is unclear to whether the excrement in the video is real. The director Marco claimed it to be chocolate ice cream, though Carla claims it to be authentic. Regardless, it is disgusting to look at. Even now, all of these years later, from first watching it as a teenage boy while still at school. If you're squeamish, I certainly wouldn't recommend watching it. Number 4. BME Pain Olympics In 1994, Canadian writer and body modification enthusiast Shannon Lerat launched the BME website. The website became one of the internet's premier sources for piercing, tattoos, and other body modification. The exact date of the first Pain Olympics is disputed, but it likely took place in either 2002 or 2003. While some claim that the first Pain Olympics took place in 2002, BME's website wiki says that the company held its first BME Fest in 2003 in Tweed, Ontario, Canada. It said that this event hosted the first Pain Olympics. Some of the events included drinking hot sauce, forehead pulling, and seeing how much weight one can carry on a suspension. The event would be an annual one until 2008. The BME Pain Olympics that we are more familiar with was an online competition run by Body Modification Ezine BME to find the person who had the highest tolerance for pain. Participants engaged in violent displays of body modification, cock and ball torture, and bodily mutilations. BME compiled what they considered to be the most disturbing and shocking entries in a series of videos that have inspired debate, condemnation, and reaction videos online. In 2007, a video which went viral entitled BME Pain Olympics Final Round, which is not associated with the BME Pain Olympics annual meetups, spread in popularity as a result of several reaction videos. It was viewed and promoted by a large number of popular online bloggers, such as comedian and podcast host Joe Rogan. The video itself is just over a minute long. In the video, two men are seen performing genital self-mutilation set to the song Living Like a Zombie by Mortification. It starts by showing both competitors tying string around their genitalia, essentially to stop severe blood loss. The video then jumps between both competitors as they mutilate themselves. One of the men takes a small hatchet and crushes his testicles, while the other takes a kitchen knife and slices off his wiener. 
The guy who cuts off his schlong then cuts open his sack to remove his testicles. This is where the video ends. The original video hosted on the BME website displays a message at the end confirming that it is fake. However, most of the other versions of a video on other shock sites do not have that message at the end. According to Shannon Lerat, the creator of the video, the two competitors are actually the same person who used prosthetic makeup and the video contains no actual body modification. However, after the success of BME Pain Olympics, the final round, additional entries were added to the series, essentially in trailer type formats. According to Shannon Lerat, the additional videos contain real footage. It said that one of the additional videos shows footage of a man lighting firecrackers in his urethra, a man also splitting the underside of his penis with scissors, as well as a man flaying the skin from his penis. Aside from the original BME The Final Round, it said that five additional BME videos exist, again, with many containing real footage. BME founder Shannon Lerat died from a rare muscular disease on the 15th of March 2013, aged 39 years old. He endured numerous legal problems whilst running BME, primarily in the USA and Germany, for posting obscene content. I have to confess, I have not watched the additional videos nor do I intend to. I don't need that in my life. I remember watching the original way back when, in 2008, when I was in year 9 of high school. I felt that what I had witnessed at the time was for sure real. I still remember my initial reaction. A brief cold sweat, followed by a nauseous feeling. I felt like I wanted to throw up. Watching it back now, it's plain to see that the video is fake, but still disturbing nonetheless. Number 5. Two Kids One Sandbox The title of the video sounds much more nefarious than it actually is. Nevertheless, the clip is still very disturbing. It should be noted that this video originally came from an old former shock site known as the Gumney series. Essentially, the Gumney series depicts a man putting objects into his urethra, the most famous being the Kids in Sandbox MPG video. The Gumney man's identity is unknown. The photos of the Gumney man were found on the alt.sex.pictures Usenet news group around 1995 or 1996. They were placed on fnord.org in a hidden directory, and the location was disclosed to friends, but never publicly published. How the knowledge of the directory was propagated isn't exactly known. It is assumed that it was spread entirely by word of mouth, IRC, and chat systems until bloggers and internet forums became prominent. The Two Kids One Sandbox video comes from an unknown adult movie. It was given to the owner of fnord.org around 2002 and added to the collection of Gumney Man photos. Since then, the video went somewhat viral in the early years of the internet, peaking at about 12,000 downloads a month in 2004. The video is a short one, at only 16 seconds long, and a porno-type instrumental can be heard playing in the background. The video features low-quality footage of a woman repeatedly inserting a small yellow and white gordo inside a man's penis, which results in very painful imagery of the penis swelling drastically due to the expansion of the urethra. The video then ends with the woman sliding the gordo across the man's gaping urethra. Much like One Guy One Screwdriver, this one made me cross my legs as I watched. Pure nightmare fuel for guys. 
Some would say this video is tame, but not as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. This was, dare I say, a trip down memory lane for me, taking me back to the days where I was, let's say, a delinquent teenager. But yeah, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it, if you can enjoy this sort of content. Once again, guys, thank you for the support. It's much appreciated. Uh, I've been Twitch streaming recently, and we are closing in on 1,000 followers. So if you could help me out and check my Twitch out, link will be in the pinned comments. And yeah, I mean, if you could drop me a follow, it would be much appreciated. And as always, if you need to contact me, please feel free to drop me an email, or alternatively, follow me on Twitter and drop me a DM. Link again will be in the pinned comments. But nevertheless, as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.